right, so we're going to start with this live demonstration that's going to be recorded just in case we have internet problems and just recorded for a future demonstration. This is actually an internet site that shows the steps of the live demonstration. At the top you can see a series of red badges starting with export and over to the right towards repeat. And what we'll do is step through all the different stages of this live demonstration and we'll continue to return to this site to see things update as they uh, progress. So the first thing we're going to do is export. Basically we mean we're going to get data out of our SWIM interface and into the internet. So I'm going to go over to SWIM and you'll see a very simplified model here, just a collection of six nodes and five polylines. So what I'm going to do is execute the model. It's very simple. It's just run for 24 hours. Um, so it's executed quite quickly. And then I'm going to export the data. This is not pre-done, so I need to export everything just to show you how everything works. So I'm going to go ahead and export out my Lincoln node data, both for a primary geometry database as well as an odor uh, database. So some specialized work we'll be doing there. I'm also going to go ahead and launch all the output. And so to do that, I'm going to go find the file that I just created. You see this is called uh, data2. So there's the data2 file. To select all the nodes, all the links, and I want elevation flow, downstream elevation, and velocity. And we can see what that looks like here. Uh, not too much to see when you're comparing them all on the same axis, but if we export them out, they'll actually come out quite nice. So we'll export this data to a file. For the purpose of what we're doing, just call it test. We'll put a test data there, we'll hit export, and we'll go ahead and dump it all out. And that's it. So we've closed it and we've generated all the input and output data. So all we really need to do, I'll go ahead and close that interface here. And all we really need to do now is export the data out to the internet. And so what this is doing is uh, just a series of shell commands. So everything stored locally is in uh, SQLite. So there's some SQLite shell and everything out in the cloud is MySQL. And so what we're going to do is enter the password through the external database is a two-level security here. There's the password I have to enter locally and then the remote database is also looking for the um, the IP address of this specific box. You can see here this is going to just run and it's giving me an error or a warning for something completely unrelated. This is showing my phone and so you can see here it should bring up if everything goes to plan um, my phone interface and we'll have a part of this where it's kind of more out in the field. But I'm going to close that for now. And so everything should be already out in to the uh, other database. So if we go back and, and refresh this we'll take a look and see and you can see now that we do have data. So the export from our desktop swim is now out in the cloud. You can see some of the manholes here with a timestamp, a depth. This is depth of flow uh, for this specific timestamp, which is an early morning timestamp, and then there's an aggregated odor score, an O score, which is from a different database, it's a proof of concept to show that you can take some data that's not just capital data, but more operational and planning data. You can see that same uh, data over here in different views, you know, we could zoom in and see the different series of points, and so if I click here, I can see that's manhole four, which would correlate to this little manhole four over here and this is a dump of just some of the data from some of the different time steps. You can see there's some CFM, some airflow estimates, whether or not there's a drop manhole, some travel time in microseconds, and some other information uh, for each time step. So the next step is to go out in the field and use this input data to pull it up directly into the phone and be able to process and respond back to our SWIM file. So you can see here what's called augmented reality. This is the same data that we just put on the internet, but we can see it through the viewfinder of the phone, a mobile phone. And so you can see manhole three and four. If I click on one of those, it'll pull up some of the timestamp data on the left, as well as an aerial view of that data on the right. And if I move around in the viewfinder, you can see that it actually is true to form, you know, manhole three and four are in a set location. That can help me find the correct manhole so I can enter data on it. 
And so this is called Open Data Kit, and I'm going to fill a form out that's going to help me interface with my swim project out in the field. So I say that's not a new site, and I'll pick a site. So I'll pick a manhole to start entering data. In this case, I pick manhole 3. I'm going to record the location of manhole 3 just for reference. You can see that I'm within, you know, not too close of a time step, maybe 30 feet. Um, and there I am, I'm zoomed in, and then you can see the different manholes relative to where I am. But I'll record the location for the purposes of this. I can also see all the other manholes relative to where I am, again, as a way to check my data. If I have any issues at the site, I could indicate those. And then I can also estimate a flow depth. So perhaps at my specific time, I pull the manhole and see that it's 9 inches of flow and an odor level of what I'm call 4. I can compare my 9 inches of flow against the model because I know where and when I am, and the model knows the same data. So you can see at this time step at 2 in the afternoon that I'm showing the field data is slightly less than what the model predicts. And then I can enter any type of test data I'd like. So I'll just enter something trivial. If I choose to, I could take a picture. So I can go ahead and snap a photo of that manhole on the left and, and indicate that that is manhole 3, just for reference sake, and save that. And then if I needed to, I could do some form saves and then I'll exit. Okay, so I'm back now in our live demonstration internet site. Let's assume that I've collected other data and I've transmitted it back to the database. So what I'm going to do is refresh this site and show hopefully some new data that's been collected and processed. Those two steps should occur basically at the same time. So you can see here there's our manhole 3 with the depth uh, in feet, so it's converted the 9 inches to feet. There's the notes we had that test ABC. If we click on photo, it should bring up that photo we took and there it is. So same photo, uh, not really compressed here, so it takes a little bit to show it. This data, the other data we had was in a MySQL database. This data originally landed in a Google NoSQL basically database or data store, but it was synced when we loaded this page back up, back to our relational database. And so similar to the other one, I can click on here and see all the data. So you recall test ABC, odor 4. Uh, to cover that in a little more detail, we're just showing basically in this case a qualified level so on a scale of 1 to 4 or 1 to 5 we say 4 would be bad we can use that to compare and train our model that had our odor score so if we go back and show that manhole 3 had an odor score of 4 but this O score relative to the others is very low there may be something we need to look at there to update the model and that's really the next step so now we have all the data from the swim export and we have the data from the field import and we even see the map there, but what we need to do now is update our model based on what we just did. So let's go ahead and go back to the model and do that. And so now we're back to our desktop environment. And what we'd like to do is get the data that we just collected in the field and put it back into our local environment. And so we're going to start that by basically doing the opposite of our export. We're going to do an import because I'll be writing information automatically to my computer. I'd like to have a password to make sure that I'm the one doing it and I know when I'm going to do it. There's two types of data that we're going to get as part of this. The first is the database itself. And so you might think that this would be quite a quick step and it isn't that, uh, it doesn't take that long, but there's a little extra behind the scenes work through some database triggers and some table views. And that's because we're taking the data that was, for instance, depth of nine inches at two o'clock in the afternoon, comparing it to our model and actually recalculating what a diurnal pattern might be. You can see right now we're going to pull the picture from the remote site and bring it locally. So we finished all that and now we can check it. Now we brought it all locally but we haven't pushed it out to our model yet. And This is an extra step that for the purposes of this demonstration we made extra. It could be combined into one step. So I'm going to do is import that file and I hit import. It gives me a warning message and we bring it in. So recall that I was out at manhole 3 in the field and you recall the information I put at manhole 3 if I go to properties you can see that right here test ABC odor rating 4 so the information that I entered in the field is now brought directly into the description of the model similarly that image that I had out in the field is also here so there's that same picture uh, synced up into the model which is quite nice that's a lot of background information that can help validate a model and really track its process over time but there's some other things that we can do to make that even better. And I alluded to that with the fact that I have a new diurnal pattern. So I'm going to make a new scenario. And let me make a new one called new pattern. I said, OK. And I'll make that our actual pattern. 
And if I go into this manhole three and go into the time series flow, I'm going to edit my flow and I should have, there's my existing pattern. And now I have an updated pattern that was, no, was not there before. It's based solely on the information I collected. So I'm gonna select that, hit okay, exit out of the rest of these and execute the file. Again, should be quick. Now it's twice as long, but still quite fast. It's running both of them. And if I review the results downstream of that, we'll see the results here. And so you can see, and again, a trivial example based on one data point, but that definitely at my time step that I altered my flows. And so that's kind of the concept behind running a model both locally and externally. To summarize this live demonstration, I can go back to our site and once again update it. We won't see much actually shown here other than the fact that we have updated. So in other words, we know that the model now sees what the data sees. And this is something that could be repeated over and over again. So I could go through and re-export my file and bring it back into this site and have that pushed directly to the field. And that is something that certainly could be done on some type of recurring basis. In other words, potentially at midnight every day, a script runs that pulls all the new files and commits them to the site and vice versa. I should also point out that that same data is available through a different format. Uh, always try to keep things in the format people like the most. And so you saw the import.xpx, which was the file that helped bring everything into swim, as well as that manhole right there. Uh, that certainly also could be brought in in something such as Google Earth. You can also see shapefiles, um, GeoJSON. Uh, those are all different types of files that can also help. So perhaps there's a user that doesn't use a Swim product but maybe has Google Earth. They could open that file or potentially someone in the JS department wants a full-blown shapefile to be able to use. They're also spun off separately. So lots of different ways to keep data flowing. And hopefully this is a good proof of concept to show you that it's really not that hard to do.